Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem on bell crank lever. For that we have a question here. Design a right angled bell crank lever. The horizontal arm is 500 mm long and a load of 4.5 kN acts vertically downwards at the end of this arm. At the end of 150 mm long arm which is perpendicular to the 500 mm long arm a force P acts at right angle to the axis of 150 mm long arm take the following data for pin and lever materials that is for both of them tensile stress is 75 megapascal shear stress 60 megapascal and bearing stress is 10 newton per mm square or you can say bearing pressure now this is the question we have whatever is given here we will be drawing that in the form of a diagram that is of a bell crank lever here the question is to design a right angle bell crank lever so let us get started with this design so i'll say that in the solution for this now what is a bell crank lever it has a fulcrum Now this right angle lever is called as the bell crank lever. Next. In this, here this end it is called as the fulcrum. And this pin it is called as fulcrum pin. Here we have this in blue. This is the fulcrum pin. Now, I'll read again whatever is given and mark it on the diagram. Design a right angled bell crank lever. The horizontal arm is 500 mm long. So this horizontal arm, it is given that its length is 500 mm it is 500 mm long and a load of 4.5 kilo newton acts vertically downward at the end of this arm so at the end of it we have load is equal to 4.5 kilo newton next at the end of 150 mm long arm which is perpendicular to the 500 mm long arm so perpendicular to this 500 mm long arm we have another arm whose distance is it is vertical and this value is 150 mm next a force P acts at right angle to the axis of 150 mm long arm so here a force is acting which is called as force P which is passing through this axis next Take the following data for pin and lever, both the materials, your tensile stress, shear stress and bearing pressure values are given. So now we have to design this bell crank lever. It is a bell crank lever. Now when we are designing this lever, the most important part in the bell crank lever is this fulcrum because how this lever works that here since the load is acting downward and we want to lift this load so we are applying effort at one end and because of this effort when it is applied this bell crank lever would be rotating it would be turning about the fulcrum so when this load is effort is applied towards the left through the fulcrum the load gets lifted 
Now, when we have to design this bell crank lever, this fulcrum, as I have told, it is the most important part. So we would be starting the design from this fulcrum. But before that, we need to know the values of effort and load. Since in this problem, load has been given, effort is what we have to calculate. So here what I'll do, I'll say that, therefore, taking moments about fulcrum is equal to zero. That is for the equilibrium condition. I'll say that moments about the fulcrum, they are equal to zero. For that, I'll write down summation of moment about fulcrum is zero. Here I'll take clock moment as positive and anti-clockwise moment as negative. So therefore, now when I'm taking the moment at fulcrum, here I have W into 500, which is positive because it is clockwise. Then P into 150, that is negative because anti-clockwise. So minus P into 150, that is equal to zero. So therefore, I'll shift this term onto the other side. So I have W into 500 is equal to P into 150. Therefore, I want to calculate P. So I'll keep P on one side, shift all the other terms on the other side. So W is, I'll write it down W into 500 divided by 150. So here I'll put the values. W, it is 4.5 into 10 raised to 3 into 500 divided by 150. So from this, if I calculate, I'll get my answer of P as 15,000 Newton. Now, once I get P, the next thing is I will be calculating the reaction at the fulcrum. Because of P and W, they are acting at right angles there will be some reaction at this fulcrum. So the next part is, therefore, reaction at the fulcrum, that is, R suffix F is equal to square root of P square plus W square. Now here I'll put the values. So therefore, I have root of P is 15,000. We have calculated just now. Plus W is 4.5 into 10 raised to 3. That is 4,500 square. So from this, I'll get my answer of reaction at fulcrum. It comes out to be 15,660 Newton. So this is the value of reaction at the fulcrum. Now, after getting RF, that is reaction at the fulcrum, we can say that we are going into step number one. And that step number one is design of fulcrum pin. This is our first step. Now, when we are designing fulcrum pin, it is at the fulcrum and it is inserted into this bell crank lever with the help of a bush means first we would be having a hole in the lever in that hole we would be inserting a bush and then we would be inserting this fulcrum pin so because of continuous movement of this bell crank lever there will be wear and tear of this pin and that wear and tear is called as bearing pressure so i'll say that after this considering 
फलक्रम पिन अंडर बेरिंग सो वेन आई एम कंसिडरिंग बेरिंग फेलियर वॉट इट मीन्स आई ड्रॉ द डायग्राम एंड एक्सप्लेन Here I am drawing this bush and pin. Now, here this is the fulcrum pin, and this is bush, which may be made up of softer material than the pin material because pin. it is mostly made up of mild steel so bush it may be made up of gun metal brass or bronze which are softer materials but what happens that because of continuous movement of this fulcrum pin inside this bush there will be rubbing of this fulcrum pin and after it has rubbed or it is crushed it will look like this i'll show it with the help of a diagram again the portion of the pin which is there inside this bush it would be crushed like this so when the pin surface is crushing that is the metal gets removed in this way then it is called as bearing failure so this is bearing failure and now when i try to find this area this area is equal to the length of the pin because bush length is approximately taken as the length of this pin so area will be length into of length of the pin multiplied by the diameter of the pin so that is the resisting area if i can draw this it will be in this way now this is called as the bearing area or resisting area where this is the length of fulcrum pin i'll denote it by lf and here we have diameter of fulcrum pin which is denoted by d suffix f so in this way the bearing of fulcrum pin takes place so after this i'll say that therefore bearing strength of fulcrum pin that bearing strength can be calculated now when i'm talking about strength strength means the load and low or we can say load carrying capacity and we want to find out the load carrying capacity of the fulcrum pin so the load on the fulcrum pin we have to know and that load is nothing but reaction at the fulcrum now that is equal to bearing pressure into area that is i can write it out resisting area multiplied by the bearing pressure now here since i know the values i can say that therefore rf we have got it is 15006 it is 660 is equal to the area of the fulcrum pin which is subjected to bearing that is diameter of fulcrum pin multiplied by length of fulcrum pin into the bearing pressure next i'll say that therefore this is 15660 is equal to diameter of fulcrum pin multiplied by length of fulcrum pin this we can take it in the form of df i'll say that let lf be 1.25 times of df and bearing pressure it is given in the question we can see here at last this bearing pressure is 10 newton per mm square so it is into 10 i'll say that let lf is equal to 1.25 times of df so from this we are left with only df on one side and hence i'll get this as 
is equal to df into df that will become df square into 12 1.25 into 10 that is 12.5 so finally df will be equal to square root of 15660 divided by 12.5 so from this i will get df is equal to it comes out to be 35.4 or we can round off this value we can say that it is 36 mm so this is the diameter of fulcrum pin now once we have diameter of fulcrum pin after this i can say that therefore since lf is equal to 1.25 times of df so it will be 1.25 times of 36 and hence length of fulcrum pin that comes out to be 45 mm now here we have designed the fulcrum pin that is we have calculated how much would be the diameter of fulcrum pin and the length of fulcrum pin next i will consider the fulcrum pin under shear and calculate the amount of shear stress it is subjected to i'll say that now considering fulcrum pin under shear see how it is under shear because when the load is acting there are chances when this lever is moving this pin it can break into two parts so now i'll say that therefore when it is considered under shear the area of the pin it will look something like this that is the pin will break into three parts and here this is the failing area so now this is fulcrum pin under shear that is it will break into three parts and that is called as double shear so now therefore resisting area capital A is equal to pi by 4 if I consider df as the diameter of fulcrum pin so pi by 4 into df square multiplied by 2 why am I, I am multiplying by 2 because this is a case of double shear next I'll say that after resisting area therefore shearing strength of fulcrum pin it is given by since we want to calculate strength strength means load carrying capacity and at the fulcrum the load is reaction at fulcrum rf and we want to calculate the shearing strength so it is rf is equal to shear stress tau multiplied by area which is the resisting area so therefore rf it was 15660 shear stress we will calculate area it is pi by 4 into df which we have calculated it was 36 into 2 now from this i'll get the value of shear stress if i calculate left hand side divided by right hand side my answer comes out to be 7.7 .7 newton per mm square now this value of shear stress which we are getting 7.7 .7, it is less than the value which is given in the problem that is 60 so it means this pay, fulcrum pin will not fail under shear so i'll say that since tau this is the value which we have got it is less than tau permissible and the permissible value was 60 
न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वेर देर फॉर फलक्रम पिन इज सेफ अंडर शेयर सो विद दिस वी कंप्लीट स्टेप नंबर वन दैट इज द डिजाइन ऑफ फलक्रम पिन नेक्स्ट after this see how we can adjust the dimensions in design the load at the fulcrum pin that is called as rf this is having value of 15660 and effort is having the value of 15000 so almost the value is same so whatever dimensions we are fixing for the fulcrum end same dimensions we will fix at the effort pin also so this is the use in design so i'll say that step number 2 design of effort pin here i can say that since effort p is equal to 15000 newton and it is close to the dimensions of or we can say the reaction at the fulcrum so therefore keeping same dimensions of effort pin as fulcrum pin so the dimensions we are fixing them same so i'll say that let d1 be the diameter of effort pin l1 be the length of effort pin now since we are keeping the dimension same as fulcrum pin so therefore d1 will be same it is 36 mm that was the diameter of fulcrum pin and l1 length of fulcrum pin was 45 so the same length is there for the effort pin so with this we complete step number 2 that is design of effort pin now at last in step 3 we will be designing load pin in the design of load pin here i'll say that let d2 be the diameter of load pin l2 be the length of load pin and this length again i'll write the relation let it be 1.25 times of the diameter of load pin now as we have considered bearing for fulcrum pin the same consideration we will take at the load pin also that is considering load pin under bearing so i'll say that therefore considering bearing failure of load pin now when we would be considering the bearing failure it would be bearing strength is given by since we are trying to find bearing strength so strength is load and the load at this load pin that is w so i'll write down therefore w is equal to bearing pressure multiplied by bearing area so now therefore load is 4.5 into 10 raised to 3 bearing pressure is 10 area is nothing but diameter into length for bearing since we know the area will be projected area that is the diameter of load pin 
to the length of load pin and here there is this projected area which is called as bearing area so from this i'll say that therefore it is 4.5 into 10 raised to 3 is equal to 10 into d2 l2 is 1.25 times of d2 that we are assuming so from this <clears throat> i'll get this as d2 will be equal to square root of this is 4.5 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 10 into 1.25 that is 12.5 so from this i'll get my answer the diameter comes out to be 18 point i'll write it down to the next page so d2 is 18.97 or i can round it off to 20 mm now once i get d2 i can calculate l2 so therefore l2 is 1.25 times of 20 and that value comes out to be 25 mm so in step one, step number one, we have designed fulcrum pin. Step number two, design of effort pin. Step number three, design of load pin. Now the last step, that is step number four. Here I'll say that it is design of lever cross section. Now, when we are considering the cross section of the lever, I'll say that let the cross section of the lever be a rectangle and I will find the area closer to the fulcrum pin. So let this be the cross section of the bell crank lever. So I'll say that since we want to design the cross section, therefore I'll draw the area here. Here this is thickness of liver cross section and here I have the width of liver cross section and this is the area which we want to design that is considering rectangular cross section I'll say that let the relation be let B is equal to that is it is three times of thickness now here we have this lever cross section I'll say that let's let this distance from the center I am assuming a section very close to this fulcrum I'll assume this distance as 50 mm and this section I'll call it as section YY now I will be taking moments at this section YY of load because I want to design this cross section now I'll say that therefore taking moment of load at section yy so therefore that moment will be equal to w multiplied by the distance and that is the lever length which is equal to 500 minus 50 this i'll explain i'm i want to take the moment here at this section the total distance from the center up to the load is 500 i am taking this distance from the center to section yy is 50 so from 500 if i subtract 50 this is the distance between load and the section y so therefore <coughs> m is equal to 4.5 into 10 raised to 3 value of load into 450 so this comes out to be 2025 into 10 raised to 3 newton millimeters now after getting this bending moment next thing is to know the value of section modulus for this rectangular section i'll say that since section modulus for rectangular section 
that is z will be equal to tb square by 6 this value we have got because we are considering a horizontal axis called as xx and I will calculate section modulus over this section. So how it came that is z is equal to ixx upon y. Now ixx was if I calculate moment of inertia about horizontal that is b that is t b cube by 12 and y is nothing but b by 2 because it is the distance from x axis to topmost fiber. So from this if I get here I can say that therefore z will be equal to tb cube by 12 into 2 by b so it is tb square by 6. So in this way we are getting this section modulus. Next here I will say that let b is equal to 3t that we have assumed divided by 6. So therefore z value comes out to be 1.5 into t cube. Now after getting this section modulus I can say that hence bending stress sigma b it is equal to m by z bending moment upon section modulus. So therefore bending stress the value in the problem which is given Now, here bending stress is not given in the problem, but tensile stress is there 75 megapascal. So, we can take bending stress as equal to tensile stress. So, I'll take the value as 75 because they are principal stresses. So, 75 is equal to M. We have got its value as 2025 into 10 raised to 3 divided by Z that is 1.5 t cube so therefore this t cube will shift onto the other side here i have 2025 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 1.5 into 75 so from this if i calculate i'll get my answer of t and that comes out to be i'll write it onto the next page so therefore t is equal to 26 millimeters Next, I'll say that B was 3 times of T. So, it is 3 into 26. So, hence, my answer of B, it comes out to be 78 mm. So, these are my final answers. It means the cross-section of the lever, which is rectangular in shape, it will have the value of thickness and width your t is equal to 26 mm and b is equal to 78 mm so in this video we have seen how to design a right angle bell crank lever considering all the factors and we have designed fulcrum pin effort pin load pin and lever cross section with this, we complete the design.